Now the first thing I need to do in order to make this cake is to construct the 3D room that I'm going to use to do the child's bedroom. I've actually found it easier to build the wallpaper um, for the child's room whilst it's actually already standing. So the first thing I'm going to do, I have already switched on my hot glue gun which is sat over here which is heating up which I'm going to need to be able to stick these boards together. So I've got a 10 inch square drum which is quite sort of thick down here and I have got two smaller boards which measure 10 inches across here and seven inches across this way and these are actually going to form the walls of my bedroom they're going to sit like that but I'm need to, going to need to glue them into place first so that's my first job before I start so I'm going to be have to be relatively quick with this because hot glue doesn't wait for anybody um, I'm going to take hold of my hot glue gun I'm going to run it straight down the edge of here I'm then going to stand my cake board up against the edge like so. Okay, so we'll bring this into play. A little bit of kitchen roll there in case it starts dribbling anywhere. So again, when you're using hot glue, be very careful. You obviously don't get it on your hands um, and work quickly with it because it will stick very, very quickly. So just press the lever down. Make sure you get plenty of glue on there. Pop it down as quick as you can and stand the board up like so okay just hold it for a few seconds because what we're going to do next is we're going to just run the hot glue gun straight down here as well make sure as well that you've got absolutely every bit stuck in place we're going to run the hot glue gun down here to actually reinforce it so that we know that the board is stuck not only on the front bit here but across across this bit here as well so again just pick up your hot glue gun just turn that bit down there and then just run that straight along there like that. It's like doing wall tiling, a bit of filler, but hot glue, so be careful. Okay, and that will set pretty much instantly. Okay, there we go. That's wall number one. Okay, so that's the first wall put on. So we've got glue on this side of the board and we've also reinforced it down here. So we've now got to attach the second board, which is a little bit more complicated. You've got to be a little bit more careful. So we're going to turn it up on its side again, like this, and we're going to run the hot glue down here and the hot glue up here. We're not going to worry too much about it creeping down this side of the board or even down the back because we're actually going to cover all of that anyway with sugar paste. But we do have to work fairly quickly and obviously safely because it's a hot glue gun as well so again we take hold of the glue gun and we just run this all the way along the edge of here and then up here as best that we can okay on this edge here like so as quick as we can because I say it does set very very quickly and then we're just going to pick this up line it up with this and hold it in place it's a very quick procedure it does not take very long it does not give you a lot of time to actually hold it in place but there you go it's stuck and that is the joy of it as well you are reassured very quickly that your wall is going to be standing again similar to what we did on this side we've now got to run the hot glue gun down here and we're also for security going to run it up the side of here as well just to make sure that this wall here is going to remain up the whole time that the cake and the sugar paste are going to go on to It doesn't stick to the table and we've just given it a quick knead 
and then we're ready to go. Okay, right. So we're going to just take hold of some of this, which is royal icing, and all I've done is added water to it so it's really nice and sticky. We want it to be really sticky so that it actually sticks the sugar paste to the walls. I don't want it sliding down the walls or falling off at a later date, so it's really important that you cover all of the wall. Now the wall I'm doing here, I'm going to stand it up in a minute so you'll be able to see which one it is. This is the one that's completely pink. It's not the one that's got the transfer sheet pattern on. So this is the plain wall. It's not the feature wall in the bedroom. So we're just going to, again, make sure we've gone right into the corners and pulled it all out. There we go. So if I turn that around, you'll be able to see that it's that wall there. OK, the bed is going to sit there on the cake. Right, so turn it back down again because it's easier for me to ice it when the actual cake or the actual board is down rather than trying to slide it up the wall and we'll begin rolling out now we don't want this to be too thick because what we don't want is thick wallpaper falling off the walls we want it to be quite thin now if it's starting to stick a little bit extra icing sugar on there and just carry on there we go that's better again just turn it around so let's keep it moving so it doesn't end up sticking to the table. And we'll just have a little check and see where we are by just sitting that straight over the top there. Now I can already see, let's turn it that way around, I can already see that that's more than enough paste that I need to get into that uh, wall there. So I'm going to stop. Again, just make sure it's moving. And I'm going to take hold of my smoother and I'm just gonna run that over this wall here so it's nice and flat i've not got any lumps and bumps going on i want it all to be flat there go the next thing i'm going to use is use one of these which is a plastic scraper and what i'm going to do with this is use this corner here to cut a sharp edge across and down so that i could slide it into that corner over there so i'm just going to take hold of the corner of this and go remove that edge there take hold of this and remove that edge like that. Okay, now, so the next thing I'm going to do is lift this off and I'm going to put it straight into the corner of the bedroom. Okay, so again, I'm just going to slide it in as far as I can and then just push it in with my hands, just lift it, it comes right to the edge, right up to the hot glue. It doesn't actually matter too much if it's not completely straight because we are going to put other things around it like little skirting boards and things to make sure we've covered any gaps again so now my fingers have gone in there and pushed it all that we're going to get hold of the smoother I'm just going to rub that over the edge of the wall so that it's nice and flat looks like a wall and to make sure it's reinforced because we definitely do not want this wall falling off we want to make sure it's 100% stuck and not coming off there we go now we're going to just cut the edges off so we just pick up the wall and run the plastic scraper like this better than a sharp knife so it doesn't do the damage to the cardboard again just pick it up and run it along like that that's our first wall covered which will be part of the bedroom okay just double check it make sure it's okay that's it another little extra bit hanging off there but don't worry about this edge here because we are going to put a little skirting board along there so that's all going to be covered plus we've got this board to do here yet as well We're now going to focus on using transfer sheets on sugar and that's where we're going to start putting in our feature wall of our bedroom. Now transfer sheets, if you've not come across them before, here is a small selection of some of the ones that are actually available. We stock over a hundred different transfer sheets so there's so so many available. We've even got some of our own exclusive designs in footballs and babies in prams and all sorts of, of different things. Now these were always associated with chocolate work um, but as things have progressed we've now been able to transfer them onto sugar and this is some of the techniques that I'm going to be showing you today on how to achieve this bedroom. So the sheet that we're going to be using is this one here 
So we're going to get rid of the rest of these and put them to one side. And I'll just explain to you what a transfer sheet is. So a transfer sheet is an acetate sheet and the pattern that's on it is made of cocoa butter. Cocoa butter is an edible product. Um, it's food colouring. Food colouring and cocoa butter is what basically what is on this sheet here. Now these are pre-printed so we buy them in like this um, and we're able to use a heat transfer method to be able to get this print off of here and onto the sugar paste. A bit like the chocolate, but the chocolate has two different methods. So if you ever go out and purchase transfer sheets to use for chocolate or for sugar, they do work either way. So you do have two different choices in order to be able to use these. So this is the one that we're going to use. We're just gonna pop that there out of the way for the moment. You have to be a bit careful with transfer sheets because as you hold them, they will melt in your hands. So you need to keep your hands off them. One side will feel rough, that's the pattern, and the other side will feel smooth. Okay, so I've picked this particular transfer sheet that I'm going to use, and I've also chosen some blue sugar paste, some pale blue sugar paste. By putting a different colour onto the sugar paste, I get all sorts of different effects. So for this particular project, I've decided to pick blue. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm also going to do the same size wall as I've just done for the pink, which we did with 250 grams. I've actually increased the amount of sugar paste I'm going to do with the blue, because I need my sugar paste to be a little bit thicker when I start doing the transfer sheet method. And you'll see why because it the hair dry will actually heat up the sugar paste and make it much more vulnerable so it's really important that you have a little bit more sugar paste because it needs to be a little bit thicker okay so I'm going to start by kneading the sugar paste ready for me to roll it out so I've got a little bit more than last time just so I can roll it out a little bit thicker okay hold it over there it's still a little bit short so I need to make it a bit bigger what I need to do is I need it to be a little bit bigger because the transfer sheet will when it transfers just in case I've got any mistakes and I need to cut it out it's just slightly skew with where I haven't quite caught it so I need to give myself a little extra option there so by cutting it a little bit bigger that will help me I'm just going to run my smoother over this just to get rid of some of these air bubbles that are appearing okay right we're ready to roll so again, just put that over the top. You see, that's quite a bigger piece than the actual um, wall itself, but that's gonna give me my little extra bits that I need as well to make the picture frames and also the little cushions that are on the girl's bed. So a little extra is fine. And also it means that, you know, if I make any mistakes, I can actually sort of choose a really nice piece of transfer um, from what I'm gonna do. Right, okay, now I'm just gonna change a few things around now. So I'm get rid of my rolling pin. This is neat where you need to nail anything down because you're gonna switch your hairdryer on and it's gonna go everywhere. So lots of icing sugar, lots and lots and lots and lots of icing sugar, but your sugar paste is gonna go on top of it. If you don't, you'll find that you'll have this beautiful transfer welded to the table. So this is really, really important that you actually do this. Take hold of your plastic scraper, just push it underneath your paste because when you initially switch on the hairdryer, you might get a little bit of a, of a snowstorm of icing sugar. So be very, very sure that you have got icing sugar underneath there. Okay, right, so we take hold of the transfer sheet. Remember what I said about one side feels rough and one side feels smooth. So it's the rough side that goes down. It also has, sometimes on the side of it, the person who made it. We don't really want that on the wall, so just make sure that's overhanging the edge as well because you don't really want to have that included in your design. Now we have a smoother. The purpose of the smoother is to actually hold the transfer sheet in place. 
by pressing really hard you're not actually going to be helping the procedure particularly it certainly if I was to press like this I'm not transferring the transfer process is taking place with the hairdryer the heat of the hairdryer is what is actually taking this pattern off this is controlling the transfer sheet to stop it flying around the room okay and keeping the sugar place flat so although it's very important the actual transfer is being done by the heat and you need to be very consistent with your actual heat right so here we go transfer sheet in place icing sugar underneath the sugar paste i've got my hair dryer not too sure again about how hot it is just i'm going to use it to the heat of it to bring it on the first thing i'm going to do is have it on hot full stop i'm not going to have it on cool or warm i'm going to have it on hot but initially i'm going to have it on a slower setting i've got a medium setting and then a high setting just so i can get the transfer sheet settled down in place if i switch it on full power first thing it's going to go whoosh and the sheet's going to take off so it's really just about settling it down the whole process is going to take approximately three to five minutes it isn't something that can be rushed lots of people when they do this for the first time lots the mistakes that are made of people thinking they can do this instead of one to two minutes it does actually take three to five minutes to do this um, and being very consistent with the way that you work with the heat and being very sure that you're getting absolutely everything and you'll only find that out when you peel off the sheet at the end and you'll see the patches that you've actually missed so being consistent is important and just taking your time with it is also really important so we'll begin there we go so we'll just turn it on the slower setting to start with so what I'm doing at the moment is just settling the transfer sheet down so that it's got chance to actually settle and stick I'm just going to stop the hair dry for the moment just so you can have a little look to see exactly how far we've got so far so I've been doing this approximately a couple of minutes at the moment so if you just sort of peel back the corner you can actually already see that the transfer sheet is coming off and it's coming off really well um, this is also a transfer sheet that's got three colors on it and the more colors that are on the transfer sheet the longer you need to spend the time on getting all of the pattern off I'm just going to run it a couple more times over the transfer sheet just to be really really sure that I've actually got everything and then we're going to peel the sheet off Okay, I'm feeling confident that that will be all right. Just smooth it down. And then we're ready to now peel off the sheet. So we're starting one corner. Again, it's a transfer sheet, so the pattern's coming off, so there should be nothing left, or there might be little odd bits left. But generally, as I say, with a transfer sheet, it's a one use only, so once it's off, it's off. Okay, so we'll just slowly peel this back. Just help the sugar paste if it's starting to stick. little patch here and there just where I haven't quite caught the heat but generally I am pleased with that there we go so that's the majority of the pattern off so that's 
excellent news. Right, we'll just put that to one side. It's hot. I can't pick it up at the moment. If I picked it up, it literally would collapse. So I need to leave it just for a few minutes, which is great because I've got another little job that I need to do, and that's just to paint the side of this wall here ready for it to go on. My pink wall's now dried while I've been doing that, so this is all ready for me to go. So I'm going to take hold of my royal icing again, and I'm just going to paint this inside onto this wall again nice sticky royal icing make sure it's plenty of it on <clears throat> now what's actually happened is the, the sugar paste has got a bit thinner the heat of the hairdryer has made it break down a bit more so that's why I said to you, you needed to roll it out a little bit thicker right so there we go I'm just finishing this now so that's ready for me to pop my feature wall onto. Right, there we go. I do need to try and make sure that this piece that's in the corner um, is as flat as we can, or certainly as straight as we can, because this is going to have the edge of the wallpaper going next to it. So we do want that to be quite nice and tight. It's just worth running the scrape up there just to straighten it up. Okay, and then we're back to this again, and we're doing exactly what we did before. We're just going to run the scraper across the top, just so we've got one sharp edge, and then we're going to run it down this side so that I can literally just turn it. So I'm going to run my sharp edge straight down this. I've got a lovely big sheet of transfer, which means I've got lots of choice, but not only have I got lots of choice, it means I've got lots of spare bits to make things with, so I'm quite pleased about that. Right, so again, it's still quite soft, but it hasn't stuck to the table, which is brilliant news. So I'm just going to pick it up, just turn this towards me a little bit, remove that little bit of pink paste that's appeared. Okay, you've got to be careful with it because it will stretch gently onto the board. Make sure you don't catch any bits, push it into the corner like so. Straighten it out as you go. Just push it in. And you see the transfer is not coming off on your hands. The pattern will stay on the sugar paste. I think lots of people think that once they start doing this, it will all come off. Well, obviously you need to be a little bit careful, but generally the transfer sheet will actually just stay in place on the sugar paste. And there we go. And I've got my nice join between the pink wall and the feature wall. I'm not too worried again about the bit at the bottom because that's the bit where I'm going to have my skirting board and also I've got to cover this board yet um, ready for my bed to sit on. Okay, so that's that bit there and then I'm just going to lift that up and just very carefully just cut the excess off there. I'm going to cut that piece off just to give me a little bit of space and then I'm just going to cut another piece off there. And I'm just going to make sure it's completely settled just run my smoother over the top I'm happy with that and I'm going to leave it on its side to dry you can see the pink one's already dried and I only did that one sort of five ten minutes ago and already it's in place securely and it's not going anywhere so we'll give this one the same value of time and just leave it standing like that before we attempt to cover the board now before we actually get to the point of binning these little pieces because it's actually worth possibly making some of the accessories that you're going to need on your cake uh, versus throwing them away you've got little things here that you can start to cut out and make your picture frames and the rugs and the other bits and pieces. All of the bedroom and it's quite nice because they'll be the sat there drying them while I'm then preparing the cake and covering the cake ready um, to go on the walls which again are obviously still drying at the moment so I need several sort of sets of of square cutters and some white sugar paste and what I'm going to do first I'm going to roll this out now what you need to be a little bit careful of with all of this is not to make the pictures too heavy because if the pictures are too heavy they are going to slide off the walls so you need to make sure that the actual white of the background is not too thick on the picture okay so to cut out a picture frame what we're going to do is just press this down give it a little twist on the board so you don't get any 
hairy edges on the sugar paste and then peel it off like so. I'm going to go back over the transfer sheet that I've got up here. Again, I'm going to press this down and I'm just going to twist it and I'm going to pull it back round here. So I've got two pieces side by side. The next thing I'm going to do is take hold of a slightly smaller um, cutter here and I am going to cut out very carefully the middle so I end up with a picture frame. And then what I'm going to do is take hold of my sugar glue and I'm very carefully going to run it around the outside edge of this white here and lift this on as carefully as I can and into position. And there we go. So it's a fully coordinating bedroom with picture frames and everything, bed sheets, the lot. There we go. Now I've got this little piece here left over and that is what I'm going to turn into a cushion. So I'm getting plenty of value from the pieces that I've actually cut out. So my frame is going to sit there just for a second. And again, I'm going to go back to my white sugar paste and I'm going to use the same size cutter and I'm just going to cut myself a little base out. Pop that down like that. I want my cushion to be quite nice and plump. So I'm actually just going to take hold of a piece of just ordinary white sugar paste and put myself a bit of a, a square pad into the middle of the paste. I'm just going to plump it up a bit. I'm not going to spend too much time on it. I'm literally just want it so that it's going to be a little bit 3D. Again, I'm just going to take my glue and pop my little pad into the middle of it like so and then just run the sugar glue all the way around the inside of this cushion okay so here we go this is the other little piece remember that came out of the picture frame so i'm just going to take that and i'm going to place this straight over the top of this little bit here just stretch it out a bit remember what i said about the transfer doesn't come off in your hands so i'm, I'm able to press it down and then to make sure it looks like a proper cushion. I'm going to go take hold of my stitching wheel here and I'm just going to run this round the outside edge so it actually looks like somebody has got hold of their sewing machine and stitch this little cushion up for this little girl in her bed. There we go. Right, so all I need to do now in this little picture frame is just put a tiny little flower again. We'll do it in pink so that it brings out the other wall and we'll just take hold of this sugar paste here and you use one of our or one of the plunger cutters that we've got a nice little flower just pop that in there give it a little twist and then we'll just punch it out like that there we go and then very carefully we're going to turn it upside down and paint whoops now I've dropped it there we go turn it upside down paint a little bit of glue on there and then we will slide that onto the middle of the picture like so just rearrange it a little bit so it's exactly in the right place there we go sugar glue is quite handy because you can sort of slide the flower around okay i'm also going to put a little coordinating flower onto this cushion here so again i'm just going to cut that out and i'm just going to lift it up here turn it over pop a little bit of sugar glue onto the back of it then I'm just going to lay it in the corner of her cushion so she's got a little matching cushion to go on her bed as well there we go and then we just need to do the middles of these two flowers here move this out of the way so I'm just going to take hold of a little tiny piece of blue sugar paste and I'm just going to roll this between my fingers like so Again, just take hold of a little bit of sugar glue, just drop that into the middle there and there. And I'm just gonna pop that on and I'm just gonna press it down so it fills up the middle of the flower.
scene. I've already painted it with the royal icing mix, uh, ready for it to actually stick to it. And I'm going to do white. Um, you can do whatever colour you want, but I didn't want to go for overkill on the colour. I wanted to keep the colours on the wall, so I just went for a white carpet. So first thing I'm going to do is start by rolling out the sugar paste, which I've got on icing sugar. So this is now the base of my cake. Keep it moving, make sure it doesn't stick to the table. So I want a nice big square piece of sugar paste. Pick it up, turn it around again. And I'm gonna run a textured rolling pin across the base of it, purely because um, I want the sugar paste to be a little bit interesting anyway, but I want it to be quite sort of like carpet effects. So I'm gonna use a fabric rolling pin. There's lots of different types of textured rolling pins that you can use. This one is a fabric effect, as I said, and this one, it's got like little daisies and flowers on it. So it's really up to you what you've got available. Um, you might just want to keep it plain. It's really, you know, how you feel about having a textured carpet. I'm just gonna lift this board over the top. I can see that it's big enough, so that's good. Then I'm just gonna take hold of this and run this across sugar paste so it produces this lovely pattern I'm just going to go back across this again just to join it up and then I'm ready to put the carpet straight on top of my board set up here so same as before I'm going to take hold of my plastic scraper and I'm going to cut one edge and then cut across the other side straight down like that. because then it can drop, turn it, again, just cut it off like that. That's it, and then we just pop that down, and that's the bedroom scene near enough done. We're just gonna do some little skirting boards around here now, just to cover up this line here. We've got the join between the feature wall and the bedroom wall okay, that looks straight enough to me. We could, if we wanted to be a bit more fussy, we can just run the plastic scraper up the center of it here just to tidy it up to make it look a bit neater. What we're gonna do with the skirting boards, we're just gonna keep it very simple. We're just gonna roll out some straight strips of white sugar paste and just put a little bit of sugar glue on them and put them against the wall. So we need to just roll ourselves out some paste. Okay, a little bit of icing sugar down. Oh.
against the wall and I'm going to bring over my sugar glue and what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to run this bring that into play all the way along this bit of the skirting board here I'm going to run it against the the actual wall versus doing it against the sugar paste again uh, the piece that I've cut here again because then it will be less sticky for me to handle I'm just going to run that across there like that if I need to add a bit more paste I can always tuck the brush down at a later date so next thing I'm going to do lift this on like so so that's my straight piece and I'm just going to lift that against tuck it into the corner there and I'm going to very carefully push this up against the wall so that I get a nice straight skirting board okay and then I'm just going to cut the excess off again with my plastic scraper just take that down the end there okay if I want to make sure it's completely straight I can just go along with my plastic scraper again just make sure it's in position which it looks like it is and then we'll just do exactly the same on the other side Um, prepared measures seven inches down this side and approximately four and four and a half inches going this way so this is basically just a little bed that we're then going to put onto um, our cake set up here so I've covered it in buttercream already so that I'm able to put my sugar paste straight onto it and I'm just going to put a little bit more buttercream onto my cake board so that I can actually sit the little bed on I'm going to ice it straight onto the board because I'm going to go for quite a sort of loose effect when I come to put the bed sheets over the top. So again, I'm just going to lift this up and I'm just going to pop that into position. Look, push it back a bit. There we go. Just like that. Okay. The next. sugar paste is going to stretch so if we go for about seven and a half I think going across that way which I'm not far out um, if we do the calculations the other way that would be what we got here seven eight and a half seven nine and a half eleven and a half but again because it stretches when you pick it up we'll go back and we'll call it about 10 inches so 10 by about seven so we're not far off where we are already so what we're going to do is just trim these edges here because it's so much nicer if you don't have rough edges on things again we'll just check the size in a minute we'll just pull off these edges first okay 
don't want it to be dead straight and square because bed sheets aren't like that but we do want it to be you know not with ripped edges so that's approximately the size that we want to go over this block of cake here. Now we're going to start by dropping the majority of the sugar paste straight down the back of the bed. So that's going to be the most difficult area for us to actually be able to trim. So we're going to put that straight over. So we're going to pick it up and we're going to lift it straight down the back of the bed just so it touches the sugar paste. And then we're going to work on pushing the sugar paste down. This is where I need to get my smoother out. And just turn it around here and we're just going to push it down to the edge of the bed. So just treat it like a normal cake. So you're pushing your sugar paste down. You're coming up a little bit short on one side, which I am. We just take hold of it, you smoother and just push it down. Again, it doesn't matter too much what you do on this side because you're not going to see it. Again, I'm just going to lift that out. That's it. Pull it down. There we go. Can't see my cake now. It's a bit more loose fitting, which is what we really want the look of. across the back of the little girl's bed so again I'm just going to take hold of some white sugar paste I'm just going to roll myself out a block of paste to go on here so again put down a little bit of icing sugar there we go and just I want to keep it quite thick I want it to be a nice sort of thick pillow and I want it to go just straight across the back of her her bed so if I lift that up onto there that's that's quite wide I want it to be thinner than that but it is actually the right width so I'm going to pull that back down again and I'm going to use my plastic scraper to cut my pillow down so that it is nice and square. So again, I'm just going to cut it there, cut the two ends off there, turn it round and I want it to be narrower. So again, cut it like that and cut it like that again. I'm just going to pick it up and try again just to see where we are. Yep, that's looking pretty good to me. So bring that back, get rid of the excess pieces just over there. Um, so this is her, her really big pillow and I want to mark it with my stitching wheel again like we did with the little cushions um, to make it a little more, a bit more realistic. I'm just going to tidy the edges up of my big pillow with my plastic scraper. So I'm just going to take hold of this and just run it straight round the edge of the pillow. Um, piece of sugar paste, pick up my paintbrush and I'm just going to paint some sugar glue straight across the back of this and then I'm just going to pop it into position at the back of the bed like so. There we go. Now I'm also going to make just a little indent where I want her head to go because she's going to be lying on this bed so I'm going to just press it down here ready for the little girl's head to sit. Okay so I'm just flattening that off there. There we go, so I've got a nice indent where the girl's head is going to be. And then I'm going to just pop across the back of the main pillow some of the little cushions that we made earlier on. OK, 
Okay. So again, we'll attach these with a little bit of the sugar glue. So we'll put one there. And with a bigger one with the flower on here. Again, a little bit of glue on the back. You can sort of cross them over as well. They don't have to be sort of sat very straight. They can be just sort of randomly put across her, the back of her bed, like so. There we go. And now we're all ready to put the little girl into the bed. Um, we're going to add in uh, a little bit of CMC just to make the sugar paste more pliable so that we're able to do a little bit of modelling with it. Although she's quite an easy, straightforward character, it will help us just to have this um, extra powder into the sugar paste to make it more elastic. We're only going to add a very small amount of it, um, literally a tiny, tiny amount of it, like a quarter of a teaspoon, very small amount. Normally, this would be added in a ratio of one teaspoon to 250 grams of paste. So it's a very small amount of paste. If we add too much, it gets very dry. So you don't want to put too much of it in. But you do need to knead it through. So now we've got the paste in there. We're just going to knead that to make sure that it's gone all the way through. And in the process of doing that, we're also going to add a little bit of food colouring just to turn her a little bit more skin tone. And we're going to add paprika, which is a flesh colour. Now, I do say this with extreme caution that you don't add too much of it otherwise you're going to have a very orange little girl who's clearly had a little bit too much fake tan so be very careful with this color just literally a dab better to start less and add than it is to try and reverse it so again we put a little bit of paste color in there paprika and we're just going to knead it through and just see what color we get Have a little check now, you see it streaking through. So we'll just That looks about the right sort of size to me. So again, we're just going to take that and roll it into a ball. If I roll it in the palm of my hand, then I don't get so many creases. Whereas if I'm rolling it up here, I'm getting more and more creases. So roll it into a ball and then just very slightly into a little bit of an oblong. Okay, and then we're going to just take hold of a little bit of sugar glue again. Just pop it onto the pillow. And then we're just going to pop the little girl's head on there. We're going to leave it at a slight angle. We're not going to have her dead straight sat in bed. We want her to be sort of tilted a little bit. And by the time we put the teddy in next to her, she's sort of going to be sort of leaning a little bit, facing towards the teddy. The next thing we need to do is just add some features that go onto the... Um, little girl herself. Very simple modelling, not, nothing too complicated here, so very easy techniques, but using some of the tools that we've got available. Now this particular tool here has a nice little smiley face on the end of it, but it also has sleepy eyes the other way if you turn it up the other way. So we're just going to give her a little smile, so we just pop that in there like that, and then we're going to give her some sleepy eyes and we're just going to reverse it and we're just going to put one in there and one in there, so she's having nice dreams. Now she's missing a nose, which we need to put in. So we just take hold of a little cocktail stick and we'll just put a little hole in her face there. And we're gonna pick up a very small piece of, of the skin tone color. Take hold of a very small paintbrush and just pop a tiny bit of sugar glue into the nose. Now the reason we do that is so that we can anchor the nose in rather than just placing it on top of the face we can actually create a little tiny piece on the back that's actually going to fit straight into her nose so that's going to go into there this is where you get the nose on you realize you've made it too big and this one actually looks okay again I'm just going to tilt her a little bit more because I'm going to want her to stare at her teddy in a minute Okay. I'm not going to actually go as far as giving her any ears because I'm going to give her lots of nice hair. It's the nice thing about girls, you can cheat if they've got long hair and don't have to put ears on them for modelling. Mm -hmm.
to do this is by using one of these craft guns and we're going to use some milk chocolate covering paste um, now the milk chocolate paste that we're using is our own brand and it goes through the sugar craft gun very easily so there's no need like we're using sugar paste where you have to add treks to the product in order to make it soft enough to go through the mechanism so the first thing we're going to do is take hold of the chocolate paste and just give it a bit of a knead Okay, it's quite sticky, so don't hold on to it for too long. And then we're just going to roll it into a bit of a sausage. Unscrew the end. Now, I've put a little attachment into the bottom here. This is um, used for grass. It's also used for hair. It's very good. So just pop that into the bottom there. And I'm just going to take hold of this chocolate paste. Go, okay, And we're going to drop that straight into the barrel and break it off there. Be careful not to get any paste around the rim of your sugar gum because it makes it very difficult to clean it at a later date. So pop that out of the way, take hold of this and screw the end back on and turn it upside down and press it down as far as it will go. Okay, the next thing I need is I'm going to need my scriber to help me to get the hair onto the little girl and I'll show you the reason that I'm going to need that in just a moment and but before I do any of that I'm just going to take some sugar glue and I'm just going to put some on her head so that the hair will stick nicely to her okay there go and obviously we don't want it to be dead straight we want it to flow a little bit because we want her hair to look like she is actually sort of asleep so it's all messy so again, just take hold of the gun and just squeeze it. Do all of the teddy. Uh, we can do the, most of it if we want to, but again, the teddy will be tucked under the bed sheet, so it doesn't matter particularly if you get sort of the lower part of the legs not quite right. But it is quite important that we get a, perhaps an arm in there that's sort of near the little girl. And obviously we, we need to be quite careful that we get the actual features of the teddy in. So I'm just gonna move this a little bit out of the way just for a second. So we're going to take hold of the milk chocolate paste. Again, it can be sticky and mold, so we need to be a little bit careful here. So we need plenty of icing sugar down and we're just going to roll it in the icing sugar just to make sure it doesn't actually stick. So the next thing we're going to do is just pop that into the mould there. Now there's too much chocolate paste in here for that whole mould so just take a little piece out, put it to one side and then we'll just do that again. It's better to take out the paste than it is to try and cut it back at a later date. So again we're just going to pop that into there. And now we're beginning to create the teddy itself by pressing the chocolate paste into the mould.
sugar paste um, and then I'm going to just place it into the mold like so and just press it down. Okay, I'm just going to take hold of my scribing pin here in order to get this bow tie out. I'm just going to bend the silicone back and just put that in at an angle there so I can lift out that little bow without damaging it. There we go. And now I'm just going to take hold of a little bit of sugar glue, pop it onto the Teddy's neck and I'm just going to attach the bow. little hand I've got a lot of excess on the back of here but that's fine I'm not worried about at the moment and then I'm just going to do another one very quickly just be careful you actually make sure you do two there are two thumbs facing uh, opposite directions it's too easy to punch them out the same one you've got the same hand twice so again just pop that in there we go and just peel it out and there we for her bed sheet so I'm going to pull the cake in towards me a little bit and I'm going to take some sugar glue and I'm going to just paint over her and the teddy and just some of the bed where I want the duvet to actually sit to make sure it's actually going to stay on the bed I'll just give this a light coating It's going to hang down a bit. I don't really want to put the glue down too far because I'd like it to sort of hang nicely but I do need to put a little bit of glue on there to make sure it is actually not going to just fall off if I had to transport it somewhere. There we go. Again the same procedure as before. It's nice and easy if you're going up to her neckline to have a nice straight piece to start with. So we're just going to cut that straight like so. Again, the paste is now cooled down, so that's okay. And I'm just, I actually think this is going to be a little bit too big for this bed, so I'm just going to trim that piece down there. That piece down there. And then across like that. There we go. Just put those odd pieces there just for a second. 
just going to lift it up and have a little look and see where we are in terms of size so that's enormous that's going to be way too big for her bed so we're going to cut the bottom off like so so she's not absolutely drowning in bed sheets and then we're going to pick it up again there we go that's a much better fit i'm going to take it right up to her neck Um, this particular cutter here which is an, a uh, cutter from PME and again I've just made this little bit of sugar paste here I'm going to turn it over pop a little bit of sugar glue onto the bottom here and I'm just going to take it and pop it in place down there so she's got a few matching accessories for her bedroom there she is any dust that's left on top of the bed sheet you can just run your fingers for lighting I need to use something a little bit stronger in order to be able to hold them in place so I'm going to turn them upside down and I'm going to use plenty of icing to actually secure them to the wall so I'm going to start in the middle it's always easier to start with one of the pictures in the middle rather than trying to sort of evenly space them out from left to right just start with one directly above her head keep an eye on it you don't want it to add too much icing so it actually starts to slide down the wall you just want to be using a little bit okay but enough obviously to hold the thing in place there's one then the next one okay which i'm going to put there Again, just hold it in place for a few seconds. I'm just going to turn it towards me to make sure I've got those relatively straight. Okay, and then the final one, a bit more icing. Again, just sort of stick it there. Just turn it back towards me again, just so I can have a look. See what's happening, make sure there's no icing creeping out from underneath. And there we go, she's got her coordinating picture frames. She's a very lucky girl. Um, the final thing that we have to do is just put a little bit of ribbon on the edge of the cake board itself. So we just use a little bit of Pritt stick or glue stick. Just gonna run that round the edge there. Now we only need to do this edge of the cake board here. You just might want to take the that are sticking up again you can always go back I'm just going to add a little bit more put it stick to this side because this piece is insisting upon standing up there 